Ready? Good uh, morning. Thanks for coming out on after chilly morning. And the food's just a little bit delayed coming, so Alan's going to start talking, and then we'll take a little break, and we can get up and get something to eat. And I think you're familiar with Dr. Alan Logan. He's a key formulator with the new product, Greens Plus Whole Body. And we have a full bottle for you guys to take. There's either the SAI mango or the regular flavor. And if you... And if not, you can take some sachets as well, whatever. It's up to you guys to like. Enjoy. Thanks very much. Thanks for the introduction, and it's great to be back in Calgary, Calgary, Alberta. Love it over here. Every time I come uh, back, I always enjoy myself, and especially in here. So I've been doing these trainings, Kim, as you know, for a long time now, uh, probably 10 years since the first time I came over to community. And uh, it's just a wonderful family that you all have in here. And it's obvious both just in these meetings here, but just when you're in the stores as well. And thank you for doing what you do for a living. I always say this. And you've heard me say it before, some of you have heard me speak before. But there's a very good chance that you've made a difference in the quality of life of someone that you've encountered on a daily basis. And I know that retail has its challenges, but you know, you have to think about that, what a difference you've made. It might be something you've said, it might be advice that you've given, and you're really making a difference uh, at the quality of life level in another individual's life. So thank you for doing what you do for a living. I'm really excited to introduce this brand new product from Genuine Health. Uh, it's called Fermented Whole Body, meaning that the ingredients within there can influence whole body systems. But to me, it's the fermented part of it that's exciting. Certainly wouldn't be the first of its kind to be a product that would, you know, at least on paper, help every system of the body. There's loads of those already. But 70% fermentation, I think that's really neat. And we'll get into why that's neat as we proceed through here this morning. Now, Genuine Health uh, prides itself in its formulas on ingredient selection and then also trying wherever possible, it's not always possible to do this because of prices, for example, or availability, but wherever possible to match the dosage. So for example, uh, later on when we get to it, there's a coffee berry ingredient in there, right? It's been shown to improve what's called brain-derived neurotrophic factor, or BDNF. This is what neuroscientists refer to as miracle growth for the brain. We'll get to that later, but the idea is that the 200 milligrams as used in the human studies, that's what was brought into the product, you see. So it's trying to match wonderful research with the actual dose, rather than just, hey, this is exciting research on X ingredient, right? But you only bring a smidgen of that in. That's not the way that we operate. And then, what Genuine Health believes in. Just as way of background, Genuine Deeds, for example, just giving to others. I mean, this may be illegible to you, and that's fine. I'll just translate it simply. The owner of Genuine Health, Stuart Brown, and this is sort of a family business. It's not a corporate conglomerate. Stuart Brown was given an award for giving by the Canadian Health Food Association's group. They voted this award in. It was the first of its kind at the time in 2012. And he was given that because for the last 20 years, Genuine Health and his efforts, giving to at-risk communities, giving to Vitamin Angels, doing things for environmental causes and environmental groups like David Suzuki, that's why he was given. That's the fabric of his company, because he leads from the top down, and that's the type of company that he wants to, to lead, a company that's sort of given, if you will. And then also, just last year, we became B, B Corp certified, which means Benefit Corp. It's a benefit to society. You might refer to it as a better corp, right, in that sense. The criteria are your, what do you do for the environment, what are your policies in the office for the environment, and so on. And do, is the work that you do for the greater good, or is it simply about the bottom line in cash dollars to those who are engaged in this, right? So when these outside auditors came in and they looked at genuine help, it was one of the first times we were, and they looked at all the auditing criteria, it was one of the first times where they didn't have to change a thing, right? They said, wow, you guys are already on point with all of these things already. So it was the first uh, natural health company to, to get that status. Now, let's get in in earnest now to the product, but by way of background, I'm not just going to stand up in front of you and, and 
Kim knows this about me, it, it's just, it doesn't make for an interesting conversation. If I just stand up and say, yes, fermented whole body has 200 milligrams of this, it has 12.5 grams of fermented brown protein. Let's talk about why this is so important in the broad sense. Traditional diets, we hear about them, the, the Mediterranean diet, you know, the traditional Japanese diet, even hunter-gatherer diets and so on. Why are they healthy? Well, we know that they're anti-inflammatory. We know that they've got lots of antioxidants. No matter which diet you choose from, this is a traditional Indian diet over here, the Inuit or Eskimo diet, if you will, over here, and then we have paleo, which I would refer to as a hunter-gatherer diet as well, right? 30% of the foods consumed within traditional diets are fermented. Hard to believe. When I read that stat, I was actually quite surprised myself. But it is based on a number of studies. So that is something that we've been doing for many, many years. In fact, these fermentation vessels over here are 9,000 years old at the cusp of Paleolithic meets Neolithic, before farming was even fully engaged, we were fermenting in these pots because scientists have analyzed it and they found that this was, there was purposeful fermentation going on within there, right? And we're not making contact. When you, make, when you ferment, you're making contact, if you do it right, with beneficial microbes, the very thing that we're distancing ourselves from, okay? So, there are good microbes in the soil, but fermentation brings them in. So what does a healthy gut microbiota mean? What does it do for us? Let me just flip back. I didn't miss that. Healthy gut microbiota means biodiversity. It's just like the broader planet itself. And we have been pillaging and plundering our own microbiota, right? Through antibiotics, through antibiotics that are added to foods, through antimicrobial everything from top to bottom. You know, the products kills 99.9% .9 of bacteria. It's instilling a fear in us such that people want to reach for an antibiotic uh, when they feel a viral sore throat and so on, right? It, biodiversity of microbes is the, key, is the key in terms of health benefits. And what that does for you, the second part, what does it mean? Well, we're now realizing that if we've got a healthy gut microbiota, we have healthy immune status. That one's something we've known for a long time that the immune system and the gut are tied together. Healthy nutritional status, the ability to absorb many of the nutrients that sit on the shelves uh, at community are a virtue of healthy microbes. Prevents leaky gut. Now you all know what leaky gut syndrome is, right? And this was often dismissed over the years as, oh, it's just another naturopathic fairy tale and so on. No more. Because there are so many studies showing that intestinal permeability is at play in type 2 diabetes, in skin diseases, in uh, mental health disorders, and certainly in obesity as well, right? This is now being proven. And then, in turn, when you have a biodiversity of your microbes in your gut, you have an overall lower level of oxidative stress on going throughout the body. You have lower inflammation throughout the body, okay? Now, with the leaky gut thing, let me just digress for a second. When researchers give a little bacterial coating that you would find from certain microbes in your gut, not the desirable ones typically, but ones that reside there nevertheless, if you inject this microbial coating into the bloodstream, right, in very, very low amounts, these otherwise healthy adults complain of three things. Brain fog, right, you're not mentally sharp, anxiety, and depression symptoms, okay? The inference in this landmark study was that this is what happens when that undesirable microbial coating gets through the gut lining and gets into the own bloodstream. And the question is how many walking wounded are out there, right, where they have leaky gut and that LPS, it's called an LPS endotoxin, that coating, it's getting into low levels into the bloodstream. And we wonder why people have brain fog and low-grade anxiety and low-grade depression. Because leaky gut, in many cases, may be the most of it all. Because what it does is, once it gets into the, systemically, it jacks up a low-grade inflammatory response. And that, in turn, influences uh, the brain and so on. 
So where do we attain the biodiversity of our microbes? Well, traditional diets is a great place to start. Fermented foods, absolutely. Probiotic supplements, massive fan of probiotic supplements. But in terms of increasing overall biodiversity, that's not really their forte. It's not like taking one strain of a good bacteria that might be good for you, for example, if you're traveling, that might be good for you, for example, you know, if you have a, immune deficiencies or so on. All these strains do different things and wonderful things, but it's not something that's really going to have a broad effect on biodiversity. Same thing with, with prebiotic. It can be very helpful, but digestive issues can ensue if you take too much of, for example, inulin and so on. People complain of bloating and what have you. So it's not to say that they're bad, it's just that there might be another way. And the question is, if only what, there was a spectacular supplement that was available with a high percentage of fermented foods within it, right? And then that kind of takes us in the direction. So again, as I was mentioning, and you all know this already, it's just review. Your gut microbiota is here. It will either work for you or against you in intestinal permeability. And the things that can work against it in terms of promoting intestinal permeability and destroying your gut microbiota, Western diet, environmental toxins. Did you know a new study just came out that showed that environmental particulate matter, right, sort of polluted air, if you will, actually has a detrimental effect on the gut microbes. So it's quite remarkable. And of course, antibiotic, we all know this. And we live in a sea of antimicrobial agents. Now, you get the intestinal, per intestinal permeability, you get the low-grade inflammation, and then you pick from the deck of cards. What are your genetic susceptibilities? What are the things that you're prone to? And you go down the list. This system here has been linked to all of these. And I highlighted obesity because there's so much research in that area. Do you know what the researchers are doing now? They give animals a high-fat and sugar Western diet. Now, of course, the animals gain weight, but their microbiota changes, okay? So what they do is they transfer the gut microbes from that overweight animal into a lean animal. And what happens to that lean animal? Gains weight. And they work the other way. They take the microbiota from a lean animal to a previously overweight animal. They put it in to the overweight animal. They give them a healthy diet, and they lose dramatically more weight than the overweight animal who just eats a healthy diet. What are we learning here, folks? The gut microbiota is actually a, a command switch for many aspects of human health. I mean, it's so, it's so exciting right now. There's researchers here in Alberta, at the University of Alberta, who are doing this. I know it's early morning and you haven't had your breakfast yet, but it's called fecal microbiota transfer. Transfer this out and they're finding amazing findings. So stay tuned on that. And this is the antimicrobial world we live in. And as soon as I just, you know, I'm just, finishing off the introduction to where we're going to head with the product details and all, and all the exciting things about it. And at that juncture, maybe we'll just stop for just two seconds so you guys can enjoy the food that has arrived. So the antibiotics in North America, it's what's for dinner. Four million tons directly to human beings, right? 13 million tons to animals, sprayed on our fruit trees by, by the, the tens of thousands of kilograms. Triclosan, it's everywhere, right? and that's causing antimicrobial resistance. And then, we don't even know. The only thing we know at the moment is there are at least thousands upon thousands of tons being added to farmed fish. We don't even know how many tens of thousands that might be, right? Getting into our food supply. And it ultimately gets here, right? Into you. And at the same time, you know, we've got all these messages about trying to not take antibiotics and so on, but then you've got advertisements Get your amoxicillin here, right? And these are, you can't really see it here, but this is antimicrobial uh, resistance. You all know this. The more you prescribe, the greater the resistance <coughs> to them. So we're setting ourselves up for disaster as we distance ourselves from microbes. And again, not to slam any particular corporation, but we have, <laughs> we have a situation where this is a bus here. I won't mention the name. You all can see the name. And this bus is emblazoned with its logo that kills 99.9% .9 of bacteria. It's going to every school in the United States right now, this year, from September to June. The kids run into the bus, they learn about microbes and how to wash up, and that microbes are to be feared. It's not tempered with the notion that kids should also be outside 
getting dirty. That it's okay to engage in contact with dirt, if you will, or soil and so on. Because there's a distinction. I'm not, at, 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 at no point am I saying it's not a good public health measurement to wash our hands to, or to try to prevent in certain settings the spread of influenza and so on. That's a good thing. I'm not disputing the, the notion of washing up or go, it, the notion is to go out in the dirt and play and make contact with microbes and then you wash up and so on. But it's not tempered that way. And then when you see products with, with, with uh, triplosan in them and so on, right? Then what do these messages mean? And I'll show you three. You have Antibiotic Awareness Week. This is the U.S. government's Get Smart About Antibiotics Week. And this is the Canadian one, right? Focus on the problem. The problem is the over-demand, because patients go in and beg their physicians for antibiotics. Physicians give in to it. There's loads of research in there with a little bit of pressure at the end. The, pres the prescribing physician will rut. So we've got all these messages that conflict. It's a disaster. Don't take antibiotics. Don't take antibiotics. Don't take antibiotics unless they're absolutely necessary. Come on onto this bus, and I'm going to teach you about the bad bacteria that are around us. Right? Do you think when the kids get off that bus, they'd be more likely then to subsequently say, oh, I don't need an antibiotic? They'd be more likely to. So we're setting ourselves up. It's time to take this back, and it's time to get a balance ongoing. Microbes protect us, restore their ecology, and let's get outside, play in the dirt, and let's get those healthy microbes into us or take something that's going to promote their good growth. So at this juncture, we'll maybe make a little, a little tea. You guys can jump back. There's some nourishment back there. Drink.